hello, welcome to the Independent Conservation Commission. It is 7.15, we're starting a little late. Um, today is April 13th, 2023. My name is Carl Hummel, I'm the chair. Bob Sweet, Peter Coffin. Yeah. Tim Icardi. Started the recording, this will eventually end up on the town's YouTube site. Since it is now 17, we'll move to the open hearing section of the meeting. Uh, first order of business 23 Cape Road. Earlier this week, we received a email from uh, the applicant for uh, water uh, asking for a continuation until our next meeting on April 27, I think. 13 plus 4, yeah, 27. We are finishing up their work. Uh, the expectation is that uh, they will basically mail this and documentation, which is available on their website. For the I saw there's like a maintenance plan for the storm yes. water. Yeah. I will see about if I can figure out how to get that publicly available. So we may be coming to the see whether you have any outstanding issues or questions at the April 27th meeting. So I'll entertain a motion to please you 22 Cape Road until April 27th. I will move to uh, continue till our next meeting. 23 Cape Road. Seconded by Bob. Discussion. Great. All in favor. I Tim, I. Great. One um, uh, member of the committee. It's yourself. Ms. Mandalia. Apologize for being late. Yep. I uh, have anyone here to discuss 106 Millville. That is that is at our last meeting. We talked about that they were not going to be. They asked us to alter the location of the dirt piles since uh, there's activity. Neighbors here tonight, I assume you can just come on with that. We'll We're online. Oh, okay. Uh, so is the work you're doing okay if they uh, started working on the, the hydro seeding yet? Nope. No, not yet. Have any issues that you wish us to take part in with the property owner, his attorney, and the contractor? I don't think so. I think it's you know it's a, a huge improvement over what we were looking at before. Yeah. The question is when when you know when is the next step for the hydro seeding? Uh, that'll be happening very shortly because this is the, we're coming up on the time of the year when they would want to do that. Yeah, April fifteenth. Yeah. Don't yep. worry. Guys, walking down the hill. Now. Okay. Okay. No, the slope is is much better. The the um, so like erosion that. is is much improved. It, it looks a lot better. It's got the grass. But we just need to get some vegetation on it before you know it washes away. Well, we need well, to get we some get rain, rain too. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Well, I was supposed to get some this weekend. I don't think so. Uh, all right, uh, I'll entertain a motion to continue discussion of. 6 Millville into our large next meeting on seven. So moved. Second. Second meeting. Tim. Aye. Bob, aye. Aye. Tim, aye. This is unanimously. All right. Uh, anyone here to discuss 101 Blackstone Street? Yes, remotely. Mark Allen from Allen Engineering. Can anybody hear me? Yep. Right. <clears throat> Uh, my name is Mark Allen with Allen Engineering. I'm here with John Scanlon from our office, and we are here to present the notice of intent for uh, Mark and Kelly LaPlante. <clears throat> I'm trying to, the audio is difficult to hear. Is there what? You have uh, something you want to try doing a screen share for, or do you want me to try and pull up a document? Uh, either or, I'm going to ask to sh uh, share my screen. Yes. <clears throat> A lot easier. Not sharing, you should be able to grab it. 
Okay. Can everybody see that on the screen? Is that visible to the audience? Pretty much, yeah. On the big screen. Scroll down so we can see the entrance to the driveway, if you would. There you go. Sure. Yep. Okay, now that everybody can see the screen, <clears throat> What we are here before you tonight is of notice of intent uh, for Mark and Kelly LaPlante to build a single family home at 101 Blackstone Street. This property was recently transferred. Uh, and Andrew Fisk uh, sold the property to Mark and Kelly about 30, 30 plus or minus acres uh, north of Andrew's uh, current home. We apologize for the inadvertent abutter uh, notification. Uh, it came to our attention immediately that uh, the abutters had an errant message on their uh, abutter notification. It was a copy and paste error. We just wanted to kind of make that clear tonight in case anybody's in the audience or on the Zoom. Uh, we did send out a um, uh, another secondary letter to kind of uh, confirm what the project is. So this is just for a single family home. That single family home resides up in the Northwest corner of the property. Uh, and the driveway that gets from Blackstone Street to the house needs to cross the Spring Brook in this location. Um, so what we've done is we've gone to sheet two and we've, um, we've shown a detailed blow up of the wetland crossing. The wetland crossing, before I get to sheet two, has uh, a series of wetland resources that were flagged by Goddard Consulting. And those wetland resources include uh, the riverfront area associated with the Spring Brook. They are the bordering, bordering vegetated wetlands and the actual bank of the stream itself. Do you mind a quick question? I'm not seeing any property lines. I see a driveway. Are there any property lines on that parcel or on that map that I'm? Uh, yes, let me see if I can't highlight those and or where the abutters might be? Yeah, because it's such a large parcel, the, the property lines are few and far between, but the property line between Mr. Fisk and okay, that I see. Yeah. the LaPlantes. So the other property lines, if I zoom out, are going to be uh, well outside the scope of, and, and I'll kind of try to zoom in here on the, on the locust plan. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Oops. Is that going to be a shared driveway with with uh, it's its own separate driveway? Oh, let me just uh, let me just try to get in here. So the property in this location is three uh, three parcels of land. So I guess I should back up a hair. <clears throat> the uh, Mendon Zoning Board of Appeals has granted uh, this property a variance so as to create three new lots all of which would all of which front on blackstone street those three lots were all purchased by the laplants and that uh there was no intent to do any sort of subdivision road uh the intent today is to do one single family home uh could it support more units yes but at this point their wishes are just to do one single family house lot so you're saying the zba allowed you three lots on one entrance three separate yes yes so a common driveway to service three lots correct gotcha okay but I, but you haven't subdivided it or are those lots staying or they they could get rearranged in the future right now you're coming with us with one house and it'll have a house lot on it will that be the whole 40 acres yes yeah, so it's about 30 plus acres for the three lots that they purchased they have no intention of building anything else at this time so they are simply uh proposing a single family house with one driveway crossing if in the right. future when their children get older their intention is to maybe break off uh and not do another wetland crossing but break off from the existing driveway that gets permitted I can appreciate that. I guess I would uh, recommend or I, I would strongly want to see 
a lot around the house that you're building now, understanding that, you know, in the future you could either subdivide or there are other lots or let's see how you plan on laying it out now. Or I, I don't know what this is kind of awkward, <laughs> but any recommendations? Mike, or? Well, I'd, like to, I'd like to go through my presentation before I take on any sort of global questions, if that's okay. Okay. So this is for a single family house and a septic and a crossing. That's exactly what we're proposing tonight. We're not getting into hypotheticals this evening. We're just going to show you what they want to do tonight. So so get, get back to Peter's question. Where are the lot lines? Are there three lots here or is it one big one? Uh, yeah, Massachusetts yeah. Massachusetts state law says that if you own all three parcels, there are no lot lines in between. <clears throat> they own all three parcels under one entity. Therefore, uh, the entire 33 acres is considered one parcel unless they deed that out and transfer it to another ownership entity. And that you would do in the future. I understand. And at yes. that point, they'd have to go through CBA again, wouldn't they? Because no, they've the gone through ZBA once. They own all three parcels as one entity. Spread the common driveway. Again, all of that common driveway, <clears throat> and I'm going to try to thicken this up a bit. I'm going to try to show you the jurisdictional areas. The riverfront area associated with Spring Brook is going to be in this area here. This is the the 400 foot swath of Spring Brook. There's also another area uh, with BVW. The BVW and the 100 foot buffer zones sort of are a little bit tighter around that area. This is the, the BVWs for the, uh, for the actual wetlands associated with Spring Brook. Uh, all of the area that you're kind of discussing is non-jurisdictional to conservation. That's sort of the access point. And then the access point around the building is non-jurisdictional for this commission. We have applications going Forth with the uh, the uh, uh, board of health with septic systems, so that uh, you know everything outside of the limit of work, uh, as far as conservation goes, is is taken care of. We did want to show that uh, we are going to provide any sort of sediment and erosion control to be limited outside of the hundred foot buffer zone area, uh, so that any future work with the house will not need any further conservation and DEP wetlands permitting. So, so what we did, a copy of that here? No. excuse me, did we have a copy of the plans. I, I suppose you mailed them or how did you submit it? All hand delivered, hand delivered. Be across the street. There an electronic, copy? electronic copies were also emailed to Carl. Okay. Yes. So getting into the crux of the actual crossing uh, in this location here, we are proposing uh, an open sided box culvert so as to minimize any impact to the riverbank. Uh, the riverbank uh, and crossing have been designed in accordance with the Massachusetts stream crossing standards. Those standards include uh, that the, the crossing be at least 1.2 times the, the width of the crossing itself, uh, which would put it at about uh, four feet. We have designed the crossing to be uh, greater than that, and it's going to be eight feet wide by four feet tall. Uh, and that calculation for, for openness ratio has also been met or exceeded. The requirement is 0.82, and we meet that openness ratio of 0.82. <clears throat> so the box culvert is going to have, like I say, an open bottom um, uh, final grade so as to keep the bank integrity in, intact uh, as far as uh, the crossing is concerned. There's do, you a small any, do you have any details of that uh, box culvert? Yeah, I don't. Can you see the screen? I'm looking right at the screen. We only have one of two. Okay, this is sheet two of two on your screen. No, one of two. It says. Still see the one of two dot red lines across. Two. Do you see two of two in the lower right hand corner? No, one of two. Okay, that's that's the overall. One of two is here. Two of two is here. I'm not seeing anything. <laughs> so uh, try st stop screen sharing and then start screen sharing with the page that you actually want us to see. Okay.
Carl, do you have a key to the office across the way? I do. You have a key to the office across the way? Mike is desperate for a paper copy. I wouldn't have found it either. Well, I want to I want to look at the, the file. No, I only have a key to this. Yeah. Is that sheet two of two up on the screen? Yes, we're still oh, it is. Yes. Okay. So I'll back up a hair. All of these stream crossing standards that I just mentioned are tabulated here on sheet two of two. Uh, the bank width uh, calculation and the openness ratio. So this shows that the, the culvert will be eight feet wide by four feet tall, 32 square feet, times the uh, length of the culvert is uh, 0.82, which is greater or equal to the Massachusetts stream crossing standards. As part of this crossing, the elevations of that stream. stream. The I'm elevations sorry. of the stream. Thank you, Leonard. Trying to come over here to see. If no, I'd like to see the plans right in front of me. Is what I would really like. It's not on the details. Probably on the plan. No, the yeah. Accommodation servers. So the existing contours can be shown here. Um, top of top of open box culvert, sediment erosion control plan. Uh, what we did is we took the average width of the stream and, and the depth of the stream and added all of those elevations to get the finished grade of the stream, which is at about 366.5. That's the finished grade. He's asking for the grade of the stream, which is yes. going to be below 362. It's going to be oh, right. maybe three. So I think he wants. I want to see elevations on that structure that's going to be put in. Yeah, we can we can add those elevations to the structure. Please do. Uh, we can pop those in here very easily. What is there any concern as far as uh, cover over utilities? Well, I I got to look at the plan, and this. Looking at it on the screen is not doing it for me, and we can't get into the office across the street. Okay, very good. And we do know, we do know, and I'll back up procedurally. We do know that MassDEP has not uh, issued a number. We do fully anticipate continuing this hearing, and I, I would think that the commission would eventually have a site walk scheduled. So we, this is just an introductory meeting by by all means. Okay. <clears throat> More than happy to to talk this out on site uh, at a meeting at the end of this uh, presentation. So the critical thing about the elevation is that you're going to leave the stream channel as is. And then the footings are going to be how far below the soil? Two feet. Okay. Minimum of two feet below the existing soil is for the footings. Is that the top of the footing or the bottom of the footing? Top of the footing. And the footings are one foot deep? Correct. Feet, one foot by three feet wide? Correct. Board in place? Yes, sir. And how do you dry it up? You're just digging in the dry, uh, uh, water gonna get in there? How do you? Uh, depending upon the time of the season, <clears throat> two feet may be fine during the summer months, uh, but if it's during the, uh, the wet season, they will have to dewater during the pouring of the footings. We don't anticipate that, uh, based on the elevation of the stream, it's not a, a, a uh, it's a perennial stream, but it's not a deep, wide stream by any means. No, but I would uh, suggest that the wetland is usually the, the uh, groundwater and the stream is arguably an expression of the groundwater. And you're going to be digging the footings, looks to me, at least a foot and a half below the bottom of the stream. I would think you'd be in water, but I don't know. Yep. No, and it, it, if that's the case, and we, you know, these are done all the time, they simply dewater those during construction, and then uh, pull the pumps after after the footings are poured. Would you have any soil uh, testing there, i.e., what you're doing for the septic to see where the water is or where the modeling is, or? No, it's it's not needed for structural design of the culvert itself. The the bearing capacity of the soil is known uh, or generalized, and then the capacity of the culvert being H uh, twenty loaded is is more than sufficient for for uh, design analysis. 
so I just I'd like to get back to the resources that we're impacting and replicating. More concrete and water. You got to take the water out. You got to pump it. It's got to be somewhat dry. So where is he going to be pumping the water to? These are detailed questions that you're going to have to answer at some point. But sorry to interrupt. No, no problem at all. So what we're going to be doing as far as the, the crossing itself is we are going to be um, impacting about 400 and 40, 420 square feet of border, bordering vegetative wetlands. <clears throat> and that, it, that results from the edge of the bank to the BBW flags on either side of the stream. And th that is going to be replicated in this area here at just above a one-to-one -one ratio where we will have uh, wetland, replant, uh, replant, wetland replication plantings uh, in this location and brought down to a hydraulic elevation that will support the, the plants themselves. And that wetland replication procedure has been outlined in the stream crossing as well. Uh, the, amount of, um, the amount of riverfront area altered is uh, 22,000 square feet, which is about a half an acre of land. And that half an acre of land over 33 acres is only about 6% of the overall riverfront on the area, which is less than the 10% uh, maximum allowed by Massachusetts uh, Wetland, Wetland Protection Act. So those are the resources. Those are the mitigation procedures um, in and around that cul box culvert itself. Um, all of the area is gonna be surrounded by erosion control. Um, all of the Construction outside of this wetland, uh, outside of this crossing is going to be done outside of any resource area. So the permit before you is simply for the driveway and the utilities. The, the, the only utility that we're going to be bringing across the stream is underground electric, uh, electric telephone and cable. Um, that's going to be an underground utility. Uh, the site will have, it will be serviced by an on-site well and on-site septic system and will not need to cross utilities with the stream. Uh, so utilities, with that, I'll take any additional questions. Are the utilities going to be inside the box drain or outside? Inside. The utility box going to be large enough so that you don't need to do further work if they decide to build another house. Yes. So the, the there won't be any utility boxes within the stream crossing. It's just going to be the conduit uh, across it. And the utility boxes will be outside the buffer zones at, at the house location. Do you have a detail of that? Of what part? What you just told us? The way you're going to run the um, electrical cable and, and um, telephone through and all the way to the house. Yeah, so the electric telephone and cable line is shown here as the ETC line. And I don't know if I can go back to the general site plan. Is that is that being shared now, or does it, do I have to exit out? But before you do that, so you're proposing a 16 foot driveway. Are those walls on either side? Yes. And how far are the walls <clears throat> from the edge of the 16 foot paved area? Yep. Great question. So there's 16 foot paved and then it's going to be two foot of shoulder and then the walls. So there'll be a 20 foot clear. That's kind of what we kind of showed here. 20 foot clear from wall to wall, two foot shoulder, 16 foot paved, two foot shoulder, and the walls themselves will be two feet. So there'll be a 24 foot linear disturbance. the process of putting the water for putting the footings in. Peter said, where's the water going to be pumped to when you your deep watering? Are you able to hear my question? I'm sorry, we I can't hear you on the on the Zoom. Right. All right. No, let me can you reassure us that you would have a plan to handle any water from dewatering which we're assuming you're going to have to do to put in those footings. Sure. So yeah, we can put we can put together a dewatering detail where we would pump it into a sump and just let it uh, sit a little bit above grade. That's the idea. Yeah, and out of the uh, buffer, or I don't know. 
I think it would be still within the buffer, just just outside the limit of uh, well protected. But you yeah. got to have a sill, Same. correct? You got to have a, a catch for the sill. So yes, uh, uh, models, right? Yep, we can so show a silk detail for that dewatering process. It's settling out base. Yep. So yeah, I would like to see that detail and a, and a plan on the dewatering in case you do uh, run into a lot of water. Other questions from the commission? Ben, do you have any questions? No, I don't. Okay, anybody in the audience or is it all interested in asking questions about this? Are there any abutters here? They might not have received the notification. There's some kerfuffle, but. Oh, they all received the notification. We, we heard loud and clear. <laughs> yeah. Mark, when were you thinking about a site walk? Anytime you'd like. We have a schedule they want to follow. This one, because it's Spring Brook is a big, big brook. It's a it's four foot of walk, for sure. Is, is there a path going up the road now? There is, yeah. It's very accessible. Uh, Mr. Fisk's driveway uh, can serve as sort of a meeting point, and then we can walk or we can get fairly close to the stream crossing and we can we can walk it very easily. So if that's the case, would there be before we go up there to look at it, we would need some stakes out, show us where the house gonna be, the driveway center line of driveway staked out, center line of the crossing staked out. So when we get up there we we have some bearing points we're not looking at, oh it's gonna be over there or over here. So we've had the center line staked out over the last couple of weeks for, for the homeowners. Every 50 feet has been staked. The house box has been staked. The garage has been staked. The septic's been staked. Nice. So either this weekend or next weekend, and then we can uh, have continue the hearing for our next meeting, right? And maybe D yeah, e will have thrown in there two cents worth. Yeah, I can't make it this weekend. Next weekend? Is that ready? It's not ready. Okay. 15th, uh, you want to do Saturday morning? You want to do? Yeah, that'd be great. Ne next week? Yeah, not this week, but next week. Right. Yeah, I can do next weekend too. So, so the 22nd? Is that Saturday? No, when's the 15th? Isn't Friday the 15th? Saturday is the 15th. Today's the 13th. But this, I'm, I'm also okay, the 22nd, yep, what time? Uh, does 9 a.m. work for folks? That works for you, so? Not nine <laughs> it works, I guess. Nine works for me. Nine o'clock on Saturday, the 20. The half the day's gone. <laughs> oh, that's right. But I don't, yeah. That's, that's Earth Day. That's right. Bring your trash bags. We're going to bring up the garage. How about 8 a.m.? 22nd. Yep, that's fine. No. <laughs> I don't know. So it's it, it'll be the the twenty second. I'm looking at a calendar. Yes, Saturday the twenty second. And do we want to go to eight a.m.? Tim does. Susan doesn't. <laughs> oh, Susan can't. Okay, all right. Nine a.m. is fine. It's it's a lot a long walk and it's a big piece of property, but that's fine. Okay, I believe I'm now sharing mass GIS for the the property, and you can see how. There are three parcels marked in the red lines. However, they're currently uh, going to be treated as one parcel. You can see here clearly the stream crossing that uh, they're, they're talking about. The house will be up in this area. Well, the, I, actually, what I would like to see is where exactly the crossing, which one of those lots the crossing is going to be on. Is it the first one on the left there? I would assume, but because the other the others aren't going to get crossings, right? Correct. And so I'm hoping you're designing this sufficiently or in the future you wouldn't have to come back, but we can't Correct. stop you from doing that. Yes. yes, no, you're absolutely right. If if someone with a cursor can just kind of move it to the lower left hand portion of those three. Yeah, nope, up a little bit, up a little bit right there, right there. It's at the narrowest point. Yep, right here. No, that yep. makes sense. Yep. And that way you don't have to pay for another crossing. Right. There'd be a Correct. driveway 
I expect there'd be another stuff. crossing to get that other That's one. How, how would you get to the, the uh, far right property without another crossing? Well, that's something to worry about in the future if they decide to yeah. go. Yeah, right now the LaPlantes don't have any desire to get over there. They just, they, they wanted the three lots to be one lot. So they're not even thinking in that realm right now. They just want one 33 acre piece of property. Yep, understood. Let the grandchildren deal with it. Yeah, exactly. They may, they may want to think about putting some of it in conservation. Uh, they don't, depending on if they don't think that they will be building in the future. So the taxes, yeah, because arguably that should be assessed at three buildable lots oh. with the CBA approval. I don't know. Well, yes. About that. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, otherwise, I will entertain a motion to continue uh, discussion on 101 Blackstone until our next meeting on April 27th. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded and thirded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. We'll see you we'll Thank see you very much. We'll see you, about we'll see you on the 22nd. Thank if, you. If, 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 if Thanks, you're Mark. able to drop off paper copies, we'll see about picking them up and having them. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, be looking for, I'll be looking for all the construction details. Yeah, on, so I, on, I, I apologize on. if I didn't get the paper copies to the right process, but we just dropped them off at Town Hall and um, Gail kind of is the purveyor of the that building over there. And Gail just, I think, Put them on the, on the desk. Desk. That's right. Understood. Not yeah. your fault. We, we okay. don't have a clerk, and this is just the way we're rolling. Things. Gotcha. All right. If anybody needs anything mailed to their houses, feel free to reach out. Well, Mike is asking for a paper copy on the details of the, like what we just asked for. Well, that you'd have to. I would like all those it. details added to the file. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll add those to the plan. Yeah. Yeah, we'll add those to the plan and then you, you can have the paper copies. Elevations on the detail of, of the, the wall, the, the uh, footings. Absolutely. I'm sure you got you got to put a benchmark out there. Yep. And have yeah, everything related enough. to a benchmark, show where the benchmark is on the plan, et cetera. Yep. A, basically a building plan. If you yep. were going to hand it to someone and say, go build this. Absolutely. Yeah, you'll have all those in the next round, uh, the next revision. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Mark. Yep. All right. That concludes the public hearing section of the meeting. Looking at the room, and I believe the next item we would discuss is uh, 23 Cape Road stormwater runoff, an update on planned remediation work to ensure stormwater from future events does not silt the adjacent wetlands. So if you'd like to come forward to the mic. Oh, and you have some, something, some paper for us to look at. match what you're going to be showing? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, we ready? Yep. Good evening. My name is Mike Dean from DNL Design Group, and I represent the 
gold medalist, and Abraham, the owner of the property, is here as well. We've been here last couple of meetings discussing this property, known as 23 Cape Road. What we're proposing, the, the discussions have been germane to some erosion and erosion coming down the southern portion of the property. This is the older Whitten Street, puts the back end of the property. Southern property line is here. Steve, there's been uh, some of the commission members have been out the, on the site. So, as we all know, there's an existing riprap swale running this entire length of the southern property. Wetlands are shown. Western edge of the property here. The blue line is the buffer zone shown here. There's another buffer zone for the border of vegetated wetlands shown in here. So, the property has quite a bit of history in terms of riprap already installed across the entire site. Riprap, riprap check dams throughout the site. Steve Abraham has brought you up to speed on that. Well, well the commission knows what is taking place. Yeah. One question to go much further. So, when street comes down, is it paved? Are there catch basins in Witten Street? Yes. It's yeah, paved. it's it's but yeah. I, this is that Witten Street was a subdivision. Okay. So the if there are catch basins, where does the catch basins go to? Is there a detention pond? Right. So, so to answer your question, Witten Street was paved at one time. It's yeah. probably not in the best shape. There is drainage. Yeah. Catch basin system with the whole bunch of riprap check dams that are yep. installed along here. That's yeah, correct. But it's pretty much non function drainage system. So there was never a detention pond, you're saying? I don't believe, no, the outlet to August that comes down here is a direct outlet right to, and that's shown in this plan. I walked it the other day with Dave, but that's what they did in the early 70s. That's and correct. Then, is that's that date to the early 70s? Yeah. Yes, yes, it does. Yeah. I've seen the plans many of the times. <laughs> So, Dave had hired me to evaluate this area. That's the area that I thought was the biggest concern, and that's what I understood it to be. So, and I'm not. Well, my concern is the water coming down the whole. Well, there is no problem on the road. Well, that, that's whatsoever. When, when, when they Damon, went over there. When Damon, Bill, and I did the site walk right road. after Dave took over, that there's nothing. The, the work that was done two years ago up, up here yeah. worked. Perfectly, the hydro seeding and the, and the work done with the, the stuff. There is no evidence of siltation anywhere up here. All of it is restricted to this area here, directly related to the flow here. So we don't need to do anything up here that was taken care of already. Right. I, but the erosion is down the lower left, but all the water seems to currently, where does all the water come from? It's coming from the soccer field and right, the yeah. uh, comes other side. side. Yeah. We so, discussed it last then, time you were here. Right. So you're saying there's yeah. no water coming down here that would it's, then go that way? No, no, I'll, no, so I'll answer the question. Okay, okay thank you. General. Uh, like I said, I, I, I was hired to evaluate this area. However, I did walk the site, know the history. I've seen the plans date back to the early 70s. Yes, there's plenty of water that goes down to the wetland throughout the whole site, right? That's the way right. it goes. There's, yeah. 50, 50, so, there's a 50-foot difference in elevation. These check dams are working perfectly. They've been in place for quite some time. They drain down to this cul-de-sac, which has a whole bunch of riprap around the last lower cul-de-sac uh, catch basin, mm -hmm. and it seems to be working pretty well. Yes, yeah, so we can. So, okay. so then where does the water go from uh, through those cul-de-sac? Does it go? It's it, it, it has less, on, yeah. it's an existing catch basin, and it has riprap. It's uh, filter fabric in it, and you can see where the water level rise, rises during a storm event. Okay. And you can see that the silt, some of the silt that makes it down there is getting collected. However, you can see all the silt behind behind all these check dams are working perfectly. Some of them don't even have any silt at all. We witnessed a couple down in this area that I had referenced to uh, Abe. Was breaking out maybe in this general area, and I asked him. I, I had mentioned to him it might be a good idea to scoop the silt out on the high side of the check. -in. Did not see any evidence of silt in the northern part of. of right, I'm, I'm not saying because you wouldn't see it because it's grass. But uh, can I say something? Are we here to discuss the whole lot or the problem we have? You were here last time. 
Wait, you were here last time. Yes, I'm talking. You were here last time and we discussed exactly that. And they went, they walked the side and they came back and they said the problem is coming from the soccer field and around that channel. And I hired the guy to do the work. So now we want to discuss this. If you have any other issue, you can meet me there, meet him, and you'll discuss because you never show up. I never showed up. No, you never show up. <laughs> no, you just like to create problem on the other side. There is no problem. And if there is a problem, no, wait, no, wait, I'm this guy, he's issue. looking for a problem. I'm gonna, I'm gonna you want to solve the problem or you want to just talk? I'm gonna rule I want to say that the no, I'm going to rule this out of order as chair. We're going to let the presentation from the Please issue. present the problem. And if you have any question, you talk later. That's not waste our time. Yes. You're looking for problems, not for a solution. All right, so once again, I was hired to, well, to evaluate the site, but directed to evaluate the site on the southern portion where the existing riprap square exists currently. That doesn't mean that I did not walk the site, come back up, check the things that you were just asking. Good, course. thank you. I did answer those for now. I don't know if you're satisfied with that. So let, we can move to this area that's proposed. Yes. You okay with that? Yeah, boy, I am. All right. So once again, there's an existing swale that's existing riprap swale along the southern edge of this property line. And that's been installed over the years and it has check dams and it's functioning and it's operational. Um, what has happened, looking at that southern slope, and this plan addresses that particular area in red down in this area, there is some channelization coming off the abutment property. We're, we're showing riprap swale with a geofabric liner below the riprap because we don't want to do all this and then just have that channel lines flow coming off the abutment property, but just do what it may have done recently. Well, it has done recently because in addition to that, there's about 150 feet on this plan being proposed to be removed and replaced because the riprap is mixed with the silt that right. took place from this channel line slope here, right. okay? The riprap is compromised. Yes, correct. So then moving to this larger, this is the biggest improvement being shown here is a temporary sedimentation basin shown in this area here. It's fairly large. It's probably, you know, inside or limits of probably 100 feet long by 65, 70 feet wide, 16, over 16,000 cubic feet of water, five feet deep. So what that's being proposed is to tap in just out of the buffer zone, tap into this existing riprap swale, redirecting it to the new temporary sedimentation basin. And then there's also a proposed riser pipe in there to allow detention time and settlement time within the settlement mm -hmm. basin. Then you tie it back in into the existing swale that's going to be replenished and refurbished. Then there's just one little portion shown here of Karen silk fence where basically this swale is channelized heading down to the wet. All the work is out of the moment. Fix the uh, fence at the bottom there. Yeah, right. right. Or re uh, put the new one. Tell us. And that's basically it. That's a, that's going to be a 12 inch. Yes. 12 inch pipe. Yep. So I understand that the post work, the fix is in red and the yes. existing is in black. Yes. So in the one area between you got those two uh, blocks that kind of cut out the contours, but where you're saying water was coming off from the neighbors and you want to redo that riprap slope. Is that what the yeah. red lines? Yes, right to the right of one of those blocks is red. Yep. That's going, that's where I, I witnessed the channelization, which is eroded that side slope. Yep. So how do you fix it? You take out the rocks that are there, regrade it and then put I would, rocks? I would recommend at this point the way, and this is a temporary fix, no one, I think it's well known that there's something else coming. Yeah. Right. yeah. So what I would what what they would want to do is there's a riprap slope here, you make it smooth, put the geofabric down, and then place the riprap. Yeah. And call it a day for now. And that's roughly how many 20 feet, or I don't know what's the scale. Uh, yeah, that's at least 10, 15 or 20 feet wide. That's shown only 20 feet wide. And that's that's where the channelization is coming from 
We get bought the property with this wetland system here, come it down, dump it in, and that's where some of it breaks up. Because, like I said, I've been seeing that with the site inspection, and then a little bit further down, see the riprap I'm requesting. I'm uh, proposing for that to be all replenished because it's up at sill. And that looks fairly, uh, fairly recent, that sill. What size, what size riprap do you work at? It'll be almost six, six inches six, or bigger. Six, yeah, six, it's very six, similar to what he has out there. Cause, okay. Yeah. Not, yeah. not, not a bunch of small stuff. No, no. Yeah. My concern is, yes. is the, the, I like what I see here. Yeah. And the only concern I get is to make sure that we slow the velocity of that water down. So oh. that it does. Oh, yes. It, 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 the, the faster it comes whistling down that, yeah. that slope, the more chances it's just going to bypass. You know. Well, yeah, so I agree with you. Yeah. And that's exactly what the settlement bond is because this right. thing is functioning fairly well unless it gets inundated with some silt, right? So, because there's no, the check dams have even handled it and working. Yeah. Uh, but this is a settlement bond that has 16,000 cubic feet with a rise of pipe. So that's the detention time. Exactly. That slows it down. Yeah. I have a question. There's been concerns previously about mosquitoes to stand in water. Do you expect that the water will stay in the detention pond for an extended period of time? What is your calculation of how long it will be there after a storm? Yeah, I, I, it's it'll be less than it'll be less than the twenty four or forty eight hours. It'll be less than forty eight. That's hours. a pretty sandy area. Yeah. Thanks. That 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 side of town is. Not like the rest of them. Lucky. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and this is all out. Excuse me. And this is all out of the proper zone once again. Yes. And Abe looking. And, and, and because implemented. Of that, and because of that, you can you can do the work that. And, and that you don't have to get. You don't have a Correct. jurisdictional question where we need to, to to come up with things. Uh, so. I would ask uh, Bill, do you believe this is going to solve the runoff that we saw happen? It, it, in my in my in my opinion, this is a very feasible plan. Okay. I have a timetable for when you would come to this. I believe Abe uh, uh, is really leaving the country on Saturday. And I would like to call somebody probably tomorrow. Yep. And have him uh, execute this plan with his help. Okay. I can't communicate anyway from up here. Okay. Any question? Any any other questions about the plan work from the committee? I I understand what they're gonna okay. do. Any when questions? I go out there, I I'll have expectations. And yeah, I mean, and, and this is temporary in nature. He's just trying to resolve the problem that's out of the buffer zone. So right. I mean, if it continues right, on or something happens, he's not holding it. Yeah. Coming down, down. He's trying to address the problem. Yeah. It was brought to him. I agree. We're here, and this isn't, well, was it's here. not like we're building something permanently. It's not like we're building a road, and he's not going anywhere. So I think if it doesn't work, I I'm sure that, well. So okay, so anyway, well. When, I, when I was here last time, you said if I can do something before the 13th. So that's when I called him yes. for this meeting, and I came up with this plan. And uh, he had to leave other work to just to do this. And okay. uh, thank you. And thank you. Yeah. Okay. So we have a question from the audience. Would you like to refer to the diagram? So this is a Speak up. Speak up. Could you speak louder, please, or come forward to the mic? Uh, a temporary fix for a problem that's happening now. And then you're going to have a project constructed. Um, did they, I doubt that they accounted for the fact that there's now some problem with the soccer field that's putting water on this property that runs the okay, that's, 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 that's a question that, that I would get to, uh, a follow on question. The other, the other thing that we've discussed at previous meetings that was on the agenda is. Are you interested in having the Conservation Commission work with other town boards, select board, planning board, to enter into a conversation with the upstream property owners about their storm water? 
inquiry, specifically saying that you believe there's stormwater coming from the football field and the solar field. Need assistance in reaching out to those property owners and seeing if they need to update their stormwater plan. Honestly, uh, I, I put this in the back burner because I was more interested in to fix on this problem and move on. And if if Blue Water have a grand plan, yep. why even bother? Okay. You know, I mean, leave the way things are and just do it. Okay. But if it's going to be a problem for the conservation and uh, the neighbor and they were, it's a different story. But I think if they have a grant plan and they're willing to spend some money and make sure that the land is conserved and the wetland is healthy, yep. uh, why look uh, for a problem, honestly? said that this is, and I'm hearing that you're expecting this to be a temporary measure. By temporary, is that measured in months or years? And I so, think it's less than a year. It depends. Well, I'm, I'm not talking about when you might be selling the property. I'm saying the, the plan that you're talking about to, to, to do this excavation work, how long would that be until it's oh. to get refreshed or something else up there? No, it's temporary in nature just due to the fact that some type of development is going to take place. Okay. And my question is, this is a parcel which has been under development since 1970. Okay. If the blue water deal falls through, yep. what would, when would further work have to be done to turn this from a temporary fix into a more permanent fix? Immediately. Okay. Well, okay. Immediately. Because yeah. I have, if this the fall through, I have other plans. Okay. okay. This so it's a it's a it's a problem we have to take care of, and uh, I'm gonna take care of it. This is like I said, temporary fix because time is short and we don't want to create a, a problem. So I did this, but uh, eventually, it's. Uh, okay. So the expectation is this will solve the immediate problem of silt runoff into the wetlands that is impacting the abutters. If it turns out that. And you will get back to us in the next couple of months. Either blue water will come before us with a permanent plan, or you will come back with another plan because you're moving to another yes. project. Okay. Yes. Fine. I, I just want to re reiterate, in my professional opinion, this is a very feasible plan. If this area doesn't get developed, whatever, and I could care less how long it takes them, he's addressing a problem with water whistling down this gully here and causing problems over here. My opinion is this will take care of that problem for five, six, seven, eight years if it takes that long yes. to decide what's going to happen. Okay. That's that's what I, yeah, that was going to be one. I was going to uh, that's what I was basically going to say was this is a this is it's being labeled or called temporary because long term. more so because the development of the current plans that are in place and you're right that could go away so this is a pretty robust proposal it is lined with riprap large riprap with geofabric below it i mean so the expectation that is, that is not going anywhere what would happen is over time a or the property manager would have to evaluate the accumulation of silt so and the same as same as we've had problems okay does that address so, your question what he's doing, I trust that his plan will work and it'll be fine. My concern was with the commission in the future. And there's another property affecting his property. But he's just handling that the needs their stormwater plan and taking consideration this extra runoff, this plan perhaps in. Abe said that he's not interested in pursuing it at this time. When he comes back from this trip, he may ask to work with us on that in the future. If he sells the property, the future property owner may decide to work with us in, uh, in uh, contacting the upstream uh, property owners. Well, what, whatever happens on this property in the future, what he, I believe they're saying is all of this water here will be taken Energy. under consideration and not gone and not go like this. Oh, there's no water there. They got they. We all know, and we've made it very public. <laughs> there's a problem here. They've come up, in my opinion, 
and I've been doing this work for over 50 years, that this is very a viable solution. This this should work. Other questions from the audience or the commission? Okay, uh, thank you for coming and giving us. Thank you. Time. Thank you, guys. Okay, thank you. The, the, yes. The bulldozer out there soon. Yep. Yeah, so eight can continue. Yes. 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 Can I do the work? Yes. Sorry. I okay. can do this work now. Yes. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Good night. I tell you what, yes. give us yes. a call every so often on your progress so that yes. we're aware of it in case we get phone calls going, yes. hey, what's going on there? All right. Uh, again, okay. we're, we're looking to work with you to oh, okay. alleviate this problem. Thank you. Thanks. Good night. Okay. Good night. All right, thanks. 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 I'm going to say perfect. You're welcome. Okay. To decide what to discuss next, are there people in the audience here for another project that they're interested in hearing about? Okay. Is there anyone on the meeting who has a particular project they're interested in? Um, I don't know if this is the time, but I, I, I would like to talk to them about my retaining wall replacement at uh, on at 80 Extras Road. Uh, on, yeah, what was that? What was that address again? 80 Uxbridge Road. That's on the lake. Yes, this is on the lake. This this is going to fall under the items not anticipated 48 hours in advance because he did uh, send an email earlier today. So let me share that particular. So, so yeah, I can give you a brief description. So uh, the lake um, at the lake edge of my property is about a one by one slope stone slope. Um, it comes up from the water. The top of the slope is like a two to three cinder block retaining wall that holds the yard back. That retaining wall is failing and falling over. So now sediment's going into the lake. So what I'm asking to do is just literally take the PMU block out and put new uh, block in. Just replace an existing retaining wall. Dave, is that right in the water? It's not in the water. I, it's really close to the water, but it's technically not in the water. There's a one-to-one -one stone slope that comes up the hill. So it's about four, three or four feet above the water line on the edge of my yard. So you're not going to be directly in the water. That's That was my concern, that's all. No, no, no. There'll be no work in the water. The only thing that might happen is that, you know, they're going to have to put some some riprap there. There's already riprap. They're going to have to put some in there, stabilize it. So the piece of rock or two might roll into the water, but there's going to be no machine work, no excavation, nothing in the water. Is this going to be hand done or how are you doing it? Uh, uh, how big I, are the blocks? The blocks, I think they're your standard retaining wall blocks. I think they're similar to the ones they put at the town beach. I'm actually hiring Sean's landscaping to do it. Um, again, I just didn't want to, you know, I, I'm, re I'm replacing existing, but I didn't want to, I wanted you guys to be in the loop in case, uh, you know, the lake's a high visibility area and people see. Absolutely. And, and quite frankly, I don't have a problem with it, but I do believe you should file. What does that entail? File a notice of intent. Okay. And is that through you guys or how do I do that? Through us. And then we would say if you put up erosion control or if you do it in a right manner, you tell us how you're going to do it, that would not affect the resources. So okay. do you have any engineering involved with this? No. No. Because usually a, a, uh, how high is the wall? could walk you through that. The ha the wall is only about two cores of brick. There's two right now. There's two to three CMU blocks that are the existing height of the wall. Right, so right. I, I understand that. What I'm trying to get at is you're going to be working right on the shoreline. Correct. And I don't have a problem with that. I don't think anybody on this board has a problem with it because you're trying to save the back stop a problem. What I'm saying is I believe you have to file a notice of intent and and. Uh, because okay. within 100 feet of the wetlands, that's all. And notify yeah. the agent. 
So, yeah, I can do that. Uh, is, I'm guessing it's like a, something I fill out online or is it something I bring down to your office? I could probably uh, go online and it'll explain it to you. Okay. Yeah, there's, you go to the Mass DEP website and you, there's a button that gets you to a page talking about filing a notice of intent. And All right. Is this an emergency situation? Is this something that needs to get dealt with and construction work done? before our next meeting in two weeks. No, as a matter of fact, it won't, there's no chance it'll start before the next meeting. I, I'm, I'm being proactive. I don't even know. I haven't even gotten a final price from them as so I'm hoping to have it done May or June, okay. um, you know, so, but I'm not even sure they're available. So what was the name of the, the, the construction company you're using? It's Sean's Landscaping. Sean's the Landscaping. same company that's doing the town beach. Okay, definitely he should know someone who could do the engineering design and the engineer would be able to help you through the yep. paperwork process. I'm yeah, my, my, fa my father's Ed Shea uh, from Shea Engineering, so I I'll probably have him just do the design well, or whatnot. De definitely then, and Susan would be the person I delegate to help you with the paperwork process. Okay. <laughs> All right, so if you are prepared, um, what will happen is uh, send the send send an email to the CONCOM mailing address. Yep. If you are ready to have your NOI filed and ready for a discussion at the meeting in two weeks, otherwise it would be uh, the, the the second week in May. Okay, so 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 just so I understand the process correctly, I'm going to file this with Mass DEP. Uh, then I'm going to get re response from them, and then I'm going to send it to you. When I'm going to let you guys know once I've done that step for yeah, review. I, yeah, yeah, I, I would I would work with your father and, on the engineering process. He can he can walk you through it and and how complicated it is. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, any other questions or comments? Ready to move on to the next item. Question: um, Catherine Hackinson. Yeah, she came and got signatures. She got four signatures. Oh, so. I bought the paper. Ah. She had drawn, she had, had the wrong thing. Okay. So, so th right. thanks for coming ahead of time and, and getting uh, permission instead of forgiveness. I appreciate your time. Thank you for your help. I'll be in touch. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Right. Uh, anyone else on the call who's here to talk about other matters? If not, I'll just work my way through uh, the list on the agenda. Um, I'm here. <laughs> oh, I am. Sure. Yeah, and I think there's someone else that has their hand up. Maybe Karen Friedman or something. She's had it up for a while. Uh, that's true. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, uh, I wasn't paying attention. That's okay. I just, I, I, I'm sorry, but I, I want to go back to 23 Cape. Yep. Um, I've got a couple of concerns. One is um, the, you know, keeping tabs on the current owner to make sure that this project, um, this remediation project goes forward. Um, I, I, it sounded, it was a little loosey goosey when he left the room, like, oh, keep in touch. And I hope that the CONCOM will, you know, establish more of a schedule to keep tabs on it. Um, the, the expectation that what he told us was going to happen is that tomorrow he will be contacting someone to begin the excavation work. The excavation work he is doing is outside of the uh, buffer zone that we have jurisdiction over. We've got him in here on an enforcement order complaint situation because of excessive runoff. So the expectation is that as the as the ex, as the work is completed according to the plan that was presented to us, there should be no further stormwater running into um, wetlands impacting your client's property. Uh, so yes, we will be able to reach out to him in another two weeks or another month. Uh, we can do that uh, on a, on, 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 by contacting him directly. I do not think we will need to have further agenda items unless there is further evidence from you and your client and, and the property owners of siltation after a storm event. but. Members of the committee are, are pretty confident that the proposed work will solve the problem that uh, you've been asked to, to work with us. 
Well, so the short like, answer is yes. This committee is going to monitor that work that's going on and watch to make sure that this uh, fix is actually going to work. All right. So the short answer is yes, we are going to monitor it. Okay, thank you. Now, my other question is, you know, this, this um, solution strikes me as being an engineering solution. And I'm wondering, is there going to be any attempt at restoration of of the wetland. I mean, we've established that, you know, there's been clear cutting on the land. Mr. Dredge has said that, you know, when stuff grew back, he cut it down again. Um, there's been hydro seeding. I don't know, you know, if that hyd if that has been in the buffer zone or not. Um, but I'm just wondering if the commission is going to evaluate the extent to which the, the wetland is, uh, has been altered and see that it's restored either by the current owner or by Blue Water. I would kind of echo that because there is a lot of sediments in the wetlands on the other side of the walls. And that's that came when we first got the call three, four years ago. And it was so. And I don't know what the fix for that is. Often you do more damage digging it out, right? So I think. I think if you go out there, I've been out you, and I, times. you and I will go out there and I'm going to show you what I, where I think that siltation comes from. My, my, my input would be that once the immediate problem is solved by the excavation work that was presented to us tonight, and we're sure there will be no further siltation and stormwater events going into it. At that time, people on the commission could work with you and other other people in the area on determining whether future work to restore wetlands would be beneficial. beneficial. Okay. Uh, and that leads to my last question, which yep. is, has the commission given any further thought to a, a peer review? By a wetland scientist of the impact of this entire project on these resource areas. Uh, that's sort of out of scope for tonight because that part got continued. Susan, do you want us to say anything about your review? <sighs> for the Blue Water Project, not for what Dave was talking with us about tonight. Um, well, I'd like to take a stab at the plan that we this is the restoration plan and i think that's her question is whether we think it's we saying it's good enough she's asking do we need a peer review uh, I, would I would love dep to look at is, is that sufficient that's an easy no cost are we talking about the project that's outside the buffer zone right now so i am a clarification okay. Karen, are you asking about a peer review of what I presented to us this evening or for a peer review of Blue Waters? Uh, the, I, I see it as related. Um, I mean, I understand that um, the current owner is presenting this as a temporary fix, but Blue Water, you know, it appears that Blue Water will be taking over this property. And so that leads to a larger question of restoration of the wetlands and the impact of this entire development of, you know, nine acres of impervious surface added on uh, to the wetlands. And I understand that there's been a stormwater peer review um, by Graves, but I, I don't, but Graves specifically said that that was not um evaluated under the the wetlands or the um wetlands protection act and presumably not under the bylaws either so um you know i can understand if, if this is not the time to discuss it but i i wanted to bring it up again Here, here's here's what i will commit to do now that we have a presentation from abe about what he's going to do to solve the immediate problem I'll be reaching out to Connor at uh, Blue Water saying that we received this proposal. I'm sure he will have heard about it as well. And I will ask him to meet with us in two weeks to make sure that 
he's able to have the discussion about how this temporary fix will be incorporated into Blue Water's long-term fix. Uh, at that time, we'll see if people on the commission are interested in pursuing whether to have a peer review of whatever their final proposal is. Uh, there, were you here at the beginning of the meeting when I discussed the continuation? I think I was, yeah. Okay. So I don't want to really have a conversation with Blue Water about what they're planning on doing until they get planning board sign off. And they're expecting to get that in the next two weeks. If not, we'll probably continue uh, until um, May. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Do you have a question? Yeah. So, AJ Sharman, uh, 14 Talbot, one of the abutters to 23. You know, when I, when I, we've been observing. And listening to some of the abutters of the soccer fields, the solar fields, the council has commissioned to advise those individuals to get legal counsel because the wetland area, resource area, is shifted. Most part because of the changes to topography, the hydrology, yes. etc. I'm using terms that I'm hearing. Do you all use because I'm not an expert? That's my area of expertise. But the fact of the matter is that area is changing. And now we're going to add large scale warehouse with impervious ground. At what point does cumulative effects trigger a change in how this commission addresses projects of this nature? That for me is a question I can't answer, but I'm asking it. What, what's the trigger for cumulative effects? Because the weather in law talks about it. But it doesn't specify. Well, what does that mean? And I know you're trying to evaluate that. So, so more runoff is always going to happen with impervious. The trick is to manage it, and the really the only the law is that the rate of runoff has to be the same to stop the flooding. But the volume is going to be more. So what can you do about that? Uh, you know, you try to infiltrate the detention ponds, and. That's where they're going with this high tech infiltration, and they say that will handle the increase that they're doing. I'm not sure with the ball fields whether it got away from them and that the water goes off sideways before it goes to the detention, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, and then the ball fields, right? So those are two separate entities that were looked individually had this engineering. So where Carl was, I guess, going is trying to have someone to look at the big picture and no one's. Yes, at what point does that happen? Well, and, and that's you know, Chief, uh, and you kind of follow those guidelines for um, the, um, the triggers. Well, not uh, to, to put it simply, to put it simply, we can only make someone do what to the guidelines set forth by DEP, by the uh, EPA, et cetera. If they, if they meet those qualifications and any extras that the town has in place, then they're perfect. They're legally, there's, we can't stop them. I, I, I'm talking bluntly, we can't stop. Them. So, and that's, that's the key is when these, Big developers come in. They're they're gonna follow it right, right to the. Okay, I'm required to do this by law, and if they meet that, and there's no other mechanism or uh, extenuating cir circumstances that change it, then they've met the they've met the requirements. So we could say no. And then they have the right, just like you have the right, whatever decisions made, you have the right to challenge it to the DEP. Or the DEP has, you follow what I'm saying? They've already expressed this. Yeah, right. the beginning. And I don't think that is it final. Yeah, the final is finalized yet. That's, that's the planning board hasn't signed yeah. off on it, and right. until that happens, I'm basically going la la la, not going to right. make right. a final decision on Blue Water's proposal. 
what, what, what you heard me asking Abe tonight is, do you want the Conservation Commission to engage with other town boards on upstream stormwater? And he said, not at this time. I'm going to ask Connor the same question when I have an email conversation or have a phone call with him about the Blue Water proposal when we're preparing for his presentation in two weeks. I'm going to say, we have an engineer who has now come in and he's going to put in a temporary good for about five years plan to deal with this runoff. Does Blue Water want to get engaged in a larger conversation with the other town boards and the other upstream property owners so that they start managing their stormwater so that waters parcel if they are the property, they don't get the impact that Abe is right now. So that's one, you know, Abe is not interested in, in doing the action. Um, Blue Water may come in and say, yes, we want to make sure that the upstream, that the solar farm and the soccer fields are managing their own stormwater and not dumping it on Blue Water. As part of that conversation, then we would say, yes. So as the hydrology is changing, will people's stormwater plans now ensure that the wetlands are not adversely impacted by all of these developments? Any further discussion about 23 part for either, 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 either project? Oh, that's your hand up. Okay, so, yeah, Anne, Anne wanted to talk about something else um, in terms of, uh, are you talking about 85 Millville? The, Anne, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, so 85 Millville, they're um, sort of surrounded by Meadowbrook Uplands, and they are encroaching on the open space, and the Conservation Commission has sent two letters, and I believe last year someone from Conservation went and talked to them and asked them to stop mowing in the area and also putting their volleyball net there. And so... I drove by and I see their volleyball nets leaning against the tree, probably ready to go up. It might be up now. And so I would like the Conservation Commission to send a letter and ask them to stop, probably have someone call or visit, and then um, say that if they don't stop doing it, we'll put a sign on the border, which is something that you know we do on all the properties. But um, I think they this particular area is on the on the edge of their lawn. And so they probably don't want to sign. Um, so I just want to, I don't want to waste any more time on this. You know, other people stay on their property and so they should too. Yes, I, I agree. Peter, are you comfortable writing another letter? Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the, the point that I would make in the letter is we asked you nicely last time, we have the legal right to put up a sign on town conservation property did not do that out of the kindness of our heart last last time. But if we continue to see enroachment, we'll need to take that steps, even if it will detract from the aesthetics of their lot. And does that fit in with what you would, you would be feeling about this matter? Yeah, that sounds good. But I, I think someone needs to talk to them because I think the last person that possibly talked to them sort of blew it off and just sort of said like it wasn't a big deal. And I'd like someone to say, please stop. <laughs> You know, or we're putting a well, sign up. I want to make sure clear one thing up. The person that did talk to them did not sugarcoat it. They did not sugarcoat the please stop. I guess they were just ignored then. Yes. And so we want to send them another letter and ask them to come in and discuss at uh, the next meeting. That would be a response. Yeah. Yes. We're, yeah. we're, not, we're not, this isn't going to be an official enforcement order. It's just an order reminding us. Do, do we know, do we have a mechanism in place for enforcement? What's the mechanism in place for enforcement? I think we should do that. 
I... We've already sent letters. We've already gone there and asked them. Okay, well, I'll... I will get a response to you. Go through where to select to do that. Okay. And have you seen evidence as of today that they are approaching? Well, people aren't really mowing lawns yet, so it's hard to tell, you know. Okay. I, I don't want to get town council involved until we have clear evidence, i.e. a picture of either their volleyball net on on, on, on town land or if they start mowing again. If Let, let's, let's write them a letter now and then in a month, if it's mown, then we go to the court, right? We go to the... Yep. I do think someone needs to talk to them, though, because I think if they see another letter, they'll be like, oh, well, we got two before and we mowed and they didn't do anything, so they might just think the same thing, you know? We'll ask them to come in and see whether they, they are willing to appear or not. If they don't, then we'll send them a letter that they will find harder to ignore. Okay. No, that's All what right. she said. Yes. We could put up the sign, we, but we, we didn't want it because we don't want signs that it's, it's town conservation land, so we wouldn't put up a no trespassing mm -hmm. sign and Mazars. There, there, there are signs that we would put up. We put them up in other conservation yeah. areas. We have not put them up in the past, and that is that is what we should say in the letter that if we that if 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 we detect enroachment like was last time, then we will we will we will do that even though it detracts from the <coughs> appearance. Um, yeah, and it's it's common practice for us, to, you know, the land use community to put border signs up so people know where that border is because you know it's a new property and everything. But in this case, since it was right in their lawn, we didn't want to, yes. you know, right by them, we didn't want to put one up. Yeah, so if, if, if you write the letter and then send it to the town email, I'll, I'll review it and look at it. I'd like to review that letter. Before it right. gets sent. The board should review it as it yes. is before it's sent out because it's right. going to draft it. It should have all our signatures on it, so okay. we should all have the ability to critique it. Yep. Not to say that Peter's going to do a right. bad job, but... Oh, good nerds. I want to make sure that everybody knows that we're taking this serious. Yep. Okay. Um, could you just let me know when you send it out? Yep. And we would we would see about gets uh, sending you a copy of that as well via email. Okay. Great. All right. I appreciate right, it. Nice. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> it was out of time. Just... Here's 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 what I did from last year. I go here. But I don't believe it'd be a no trespassing sign. Why why are we buying? No, it's not. It's not no trespassing. So here's here's where it is. Just beyond. Just south of just south of Rip Rip. Right here is where the beaver dams cause problems. But if there's a beaver dam in this area, it, it blocks everything up. And so they have their lot right here carved out in the middle. And the problem is that we don't want them mowing in the conservation. Yeah, it's in that skinny area. So this area. Right there, yeah. 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 Yep. No, usually we put up signs to keep people signs on our property saying don't go off the private property. Never had mm -hmm, to put right. signs to the people privately owned. Don't come onto the property well, because it's open space. They can come on it. They just the general can't. public want that land. If they had a place to park, they could walk right up that green. Okay. They can walk Meadowbrook Upland Conservation. So like I said, we can't put a no trespassing. No, it's not a no trespassing sign. It would be follow what I'm saying. The, the, the restriction is not public and public use of the yeah. land. What is not allowed is no cutting, uh, <laughs> up no fires, no cutting, mowing, mowing that area. Long, long term private use. Yeah, the, the, the issue is that they are probably mowing right up to their border and, and then all of a sudden they have to stop and there's weeds, you know, foot pine grasses and they probably don't like that in terms of aesthetics. All right. Uh, so one solution would be to make that greenway there an entrance to it, 
put a path in there to actually so people would come there and yeah, you know, I mean, that cures the problem. Well, at some point that might they might we might do that, but it's not a great place to park. The the other the entrance is more on Kinsley Lane, but that could be an entrance at one point. I mean, all they have to do is stop mowing. They could plant a shrub there, and then you know they have rhododendrons that actually are on the open space, but we're, that's fine because it makes a nice buffer for them. So they could put another rhododendron on the edge of their lawn if they wanted to, but they just have to stop. And we we have a sign to put up already, so you know you don't have to buy a sign. And how if, wide is this, is the distance between 85 and 87? Um, right away, 50 feet. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yes. Looking at the scale. How much are they mowing? It's Five. not that much. It's just like it's it's really not that much. Maybe six feet or something like that. But we're just trying to, you know, keep people off the open space in terms of like mowing and you know putting structures on it. You know, it's everybody's welcome on it, and it's a resource for everyone. But you know, people aren't supposed to be dumping their um, grass on the open space or, you know, doing things like that. Just like if that was a neighbor and, you know, they were mowing six feet into their neighbor's yard, you'd say stop. <laughs> okay, any, any further questions about 85 Millville? Oh, uh, let's see what kind of a letter gets drafted. Yep. Uh, and before you get off, uh, I wanted to check and see were you expressing a concern about work being done at 106 Nipmuc, uh, not the parcel we've been talking about uh, with uh, the, the, that we were discussing earlier at 2 Nipmuc, but this 106 the area here? I wasn't sure whether you were con trying to contact someone on the CONCOM about work being done there. Well, I, I thought like where is two Nipmunk? I I thought maybe 106 was divided, and so the two was it part is. of 106. Two yeah. is okay. part of 106. Yes. Okay. It's the northern yeah. part. Yeah, it's just it's just disturbing to see the whole hill um, clear cut. It just doesn't seem like that's beneficial to the pond. You know, keeping it cool. Um, you know, it's not good for erosion, chemicals from their lawn getting in there, and that's all. I mean, I don't know if there's anything you can do about it, but. It's very sad to see that. Um, the commission uh, has been working with the owner of that site since December, and there's a split in between members of the commission who feel the work there is appropriate, and there are people who are not as happy with the work. <laughs> That's hard, yeah. Well, I don't think that they were supposed to cut beyond uh, where the the erosion was, but there are seven large trees that shaded that cove that are now yeah. no longer shading the cove. Mm -hmm. And do we want any, uh, you know, vegetation plan? I don't know. All we said is can't grow it. My only other concern is, and maybe we allowed it, but on the entrance, on the left hand side, it just puts a little. <laughs> so it, and I know that's in the buffer, and yes, I know we had to let them put in the drive. So they're grading on the left-hand side. It's new hay bales that were put up afterwards. So it's not as if they put in all the hay bales at once. You know, they put the one hay bale in, and I can understand because you're going to biff it, right? With so it's problematic. Is that the old site of the playground? Exactly. Yeah. Yep. The old yep. carousel. Oh, there was a carousel. Yes, if you, if you a big one. Go to the Historical Society and see pictures from 1910, 1905, 1920. There used to be a, a trolley that came from Boston out to Lake Nippon, and there was a playground there. Yes, it was back then. Trolley lines, yeah. Trolley people, lines. In, people in the city would escape the, the summer heat, come out here for the. Yeah, they just got a Jamaican park. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, we're. I think that concludes the members of the public business. I will just go through all of the other agenda items. Uh, review correspondence that we've received. Uh, John Deanart, the Meenan Group, has contacted us via email about the project for 3537's Hastings. Uh, they are going to be working with the planning board and town meeting and other departments 
after the town meeting, uh, depending on the results of their request of that, they will be prepared to come back to us with a uh, plan. They would uh, resubmit their, their notice of intent and notify of others who would schedule a public hearing that. Received mail from GBL law about six Daniels. So they decided not to pursue anything certificate of compliance at this time. Uh, I received a phone call and spoke with Lauren McDonald from HMTB Engineering. She referred me as working with Mass DOT about the Route 16 road work. Uh, that's what I'm going to show you. If you come here, you see this green area here. Right, that's the conservation that goes down to Route 16. Right. As, right, the Conservation Commission, we are the part of the town government that is responsible for responding to the Mass DOT about uh, this, about the surfacing work. She mentioned on the phone about temporary easements and the work that they would be doing during the resurfacing. They expect to be presenting paperwork as they finalize those plans. We carved out a little bit. Is that why? So our access or something? For commercial use or? Sorry, what were you what you're asking? At some point that got carved off and that has a different use than parcel 20? No, so? no, they're both they're both they're both part of our conservation. Okay, uh, but the same. They're just two different plots. Okay. And and since they're two different lots, Basti Basti OT has to okay. both submit okay. for, for both of them. Now they'll probably we we do them at the same time in the same way we talk about a lot of other things. Um, uh, Matthew Matthias gone to lobbies from 51 George Street email asking about uh, whether he had wetlands or not. I replied back saying doesn't look like it. However, you consult with an engineer for a definitive answer. Uh, Fred Latham will be submitting paperwork for 23, 26 Ralston Farm. Expect to have that at the next meeting. Chris Nudd is asking about a French drain that will have an apple wood uh, here, so we're going to test that. Uh, let's test compound finances. Are we still depositing checks appropriately? I, uh, I did those three. I haven't done any in the last two. I haven't gone over. Okay. It's not in the box, but it might be sitting on the table. Yeah, there probably is. It knows the intent that we just. Yeah, we're hearing drop. people drop out paperwork, so there's probably a check yeah, in it. No mailbox, but it's, it's getting delivered to our yes. Yes, so I gotta go. Did you get the the locked filing drawer open? No, is there a locked filing drawer? I, I, in in the, our desk in the other building, there's a there's the, the, the drawer is locked. There may be live checks in there, so we should see that. Okay, done you know, before the, the checks expire. And do is there any progress in hiring a new clerk? Do we know? I Can we complain? Anything? Uh, we, we select yeah, the walls. It's it's not on the selectmen's agenda for next meeting. Uh, they are going to be discussing the late bit one task force, so I will be probably listening in on the next meeting. Uh, I will reach out to our HR person to Yes, is the position being advertised? Uh, yes. If not, why not? Okay. We're getting candidates. Right? It's getting old. I, I, I also. I want to make a suggestion. We should send a letter to the select and ask him for keys to that building so we can get in there. Okay. Especially if we don't have a way to get in there. We can get that door open. Well, the, the, the issue with the drawer is that they uh, forgot to hand in the key which she was signing. She contacted me via text and I said work with our HR person on getting the key back. So follow up on that as well. My position is 
terminated for your position. You don't talk to me. I didn't hire you working with HR people in the termination process. All right. Uh, any other actions that people wish to discuss? If not, I'll entertain motion to adjourn. So moved. There a second. Second. All in favor? Bob, aye. Bob, aye. Aye, Tim. Okay, passes unanimously. See you in two weeks. Good night. Good night, everyone. Who's Catherine? Catherine Scopus? Catherine, yes.